I think that's what the, the, the average man really needs to struggle. And I've been saying this has been my message for a very long time in all realms. I've said for a very long time that life for the average man is going to get harder and harder. It's becoming more and more competitive. You need to find more and more ways to stand out and be unique. And the only way to really do those things, unfortunately, as a man, is to suffer. And that's one of the reasons I'm kind of glad that God put me in jail. Because if you look at anything that builds a man into a man, there's a degree of suffering. It's very hard to become a man and have a man who's uh, respected and has stories and is capable when he only had a nice life and nice experiences. It's usually the things that made you the best version of you are usually the worst things that happened to you. So the demons I carry from jail, the fact that I can't sleep, the fact that I can't sleep, I've had girls say to me, you can't sleep, you need to see a psychiatrist. And I said, absolutely not. I would be furious if a psychiatrist walked in here and took my demons from me. I don't care if they could fix me with a click, they're mine and they were bestowed to me by God. And they are mine to deal with and they are mine to fix because that's how I become a better version of me. I would be furious if someone took them away from me. I'm glad I can't sleep. Good, I can train endlessly. That's why I'm bigger than I've ever been. I'll train every, I'm not gonna waste a minute. But all the demons that have been given to me by God and all the problems that have been given to me by God are mine to fix. I would never ever allow anybody else to take them from me. I'd be furious. If a psychologist came in and said I could cure you, I'd say, no thank you, I will cure myself. I don't care if it takes 10 years. I'll cure myself, that's my job. And I know that when that's done, I will be more mentally resilient than I ever would have been without jail. That's the whole point of it, right? So many men say, I want to be the man, but they don't want to suffer. They don't want to fight. And I don't understand why, because even if you look at a superhero movie, they tell you, even in superhero movies, they make it very clear. Batman's parents died. That's why he's Batman. All the bad things have to happen. There's no way to get there without the bad things. I get so many emails from people complaining about their bad things. And I, I don't have time to reply to any of them, but if I could, I'd say, good. Good luck, congratulations, off you go. Of course she broke your heart. Of course you're sad, of course you miss her. She's with me now. That's life, that's part of it. That's the only way you're gonna get to that level of resilience. You can't become the man any other way. So yeah, I, I, I thank God for everything bad that's ever happened to me and, and all the demons. And, I, and you decipher it and you work out the best way to deal with it and you internalize the good parts and you become a better and stronger and more resilient person for it. So I have to thank God for every single one of them. Particularly at lit risk is for the thing you just said. It's the masculine youth who are my fans. It's the 11 year olds, 12 year olds, 15 year olds, 16 year olds. They are the future of the world. They're the people you want to go and die in a ditch. They're the soldiers you need. Those are the people you need psyoped. You need them psyoped. You can't have a bunch of men who aren't psyoped. Mm -hmm. That's when you lose control of everything, when the men don't listen anymore. And they're all listening to me. And I'm teaching them things like God, religion, personal responsibility, accountability, discipline. And everyone's saying, well, why are they attacking Andrew for just telling the truth and making me go to the gym? Because when you have these things, when you have accountability and discipline and personal responsibility, you have a barrier, you have a parameter, you have a no, you have a limit. They don't want you to have a limit. None of the men are allowed limits. We must accept whatever we are given from our relationship with our woman, from the government, from our job. We're, we're just the slaves. We're, we're the backbone of the tax bracket. We just have to shut up and pay our taxes. As soon as we have limits, they have a problem. That's why they dislike the things I teach. What do I really say? What do I really teach young kids that's genuine dangerous? What do I say? Go to the gym, stick up for yourself? Stick up for yourself, go to the gym, you're allowed an opinion. Educate yourself, be smart, work hard, believe in things, believe in yourself. They pretend they give a shit about men's mental health. But if you come along and actually advocate and tell men how to be happier. I've been a sad man and a happy man. I am a man. I know exactly how it feels on all ranges of emotion. And I'll be honest with you right now, when a man is sad, yeah, there is an inclination towards aggression. That's how we're born, that's how we're evolved. We're evolved with that inclination towards aggression. We need that to protect and provide, that's who we are. We need that bravery. But having a bunch of depressed, sad men who have no emotional control is dangerous for society. I say this all the time, they try and pretend that I'm somehow dangerous for society by telling men to stand up for themselves and be masculine. Absolutely not really not. When you tell a man to have no emotional control and be more feminine, that's a school shooter. A school shooter is not a man with masculine accountability. He's a man who's told, act how you feel all the time. Then he gets picked on for long enough, throw on some drugs on top his psychiatrist gave him, throw in a lack of a girlfriend, and he's had enough. That's where school shooting comes from. School shooting does not come from men being masculine. It comes from the absolute opposite of these things. And they know this. They know this very, very well. To fix society, we have to fix that at the most base level, the root level. I think America and most countries need more transparency and understanding of how things work. But when they're attacking the family unit, they're attacking all of these issues. Every issue you've just labeled all starts down, back down to the beginning. I really think the reason I would like to argue, and I don't know any of the statistics on this, in the 1950s, I'm sure there was prevalence of guns all around America, but there just wasn't the school shooting. Why? What was different? What was different in the years before that there is now? 
I think it's just because children obeyed their parents and their parents were a family and there was a degree of responsibility that was instilled inside of people and there's a degree of accountability and there also there was a degree Great of honor question. and pride. Great question. There's a degree of honor and pride. Yeah. I, I'll tell you something now. I bet in the 60s, 70s, whatever, in any country in the world, people didn't want to do dumb shit because the family would be known as criminals. The last name would be tarnished. Their son did this. You hear what their son did? There was a whole, there was a vested interest in all of it. Now you have a school shooter who's gonna go out there, be a piece of shit and kill people, and then their parents are on TV while, well, yeah, he was failed by the system. They don't even feel any shame. It's unbelievable. If one of my children or someone close to me did something that heinous, I would be disgusted. I would, I would apologize just for the sake, of, just for the name alone. There's no honor left. There's no pride left in the name. And this is what happens when you remove honor and pride from people. You have no honor and no pride. Nothing really matters. What matters anyway? It doesn't matter if you're out of shape. It doesn't matter if your kid's a piece of shit and a criminal. Nothing matters without honor and pride. And this is done on absolutely every level. I said this to Tristan the other day. I was actually saying we were driving. Well, the other day, long, long time ago. <laughs> I haven't left the house in a while. We were driving and I said, every, even on the most base level, I said, every building is ugly. Have you noticed that every new building is ugly? It's ugly. Just goes, yeah, it's all the same glass, big square, ugly building. In the 1400s, we built these ornate, gorgeous buildings. And now everything's ugly. Why is that? And well, I'll tell you why it is. It's because they don't want you to have any intrinsic attachment to a specific place. If, of all the buildings are beautiful in a specific town, you have intrinsic attachment to that town. You care about that town. You want good things for that town. You'll protect that town. You'll defend that town. What, what is that? That's a barrier. That's a parameter. If everything looks the same all the time, you'll just move. Who cares? Oh, they've messed up San Fran. Who cares? I'll move somewhere else. I'll move somewhere else. It's all the same. Globalism, doesn't matter. It's all the same. Buildings in Berlin and New York, they all look the same. Where's all the beauty gone? When there's beauty, you have an attachment to that beauty. They want to remove all your attachments from everything. Even now, when they try and psyop you into, let's say, the, the way that models all look different than they used to before, right? Models all look different. Victoria's Secret. Yeah, and I was arguing this point, and someone's saying, oh, but that's because you have Euro Eurocentric beauty standards. I said, no, I'm gonna correct you, because I know you think you sound smart using the word Eurocentric, and I'm gonna correct you because you're a dumbass. <laughs> Let me tell you what beauty standards are. Beauty standards, by definition, for something to be beautiful has to at least be unique. If everything is beautiful, then it's not beautiful. If everything's beautiful, then it's standardized. For you to take a model who looks the way they look without any effort at all, and they look like most out of shape, uninteresting people on the street, you cannot call that beautiful because it's standardized, you can see it everywhere. Beauty means it must have been difficult to obtain. Whether it's a building, it's difficult to make because it's ornate, or a woman who's trained really hard to have a beautiful figure, that is difficult. Difficulty and beauty are linked. You can't have beauty without difficulty. You cannot show me another model and tell me that my Eurocentric beauty standards are saying she isn't hot. Because that's not why. She isn't hot because she's made no effort. She hasn't tried. That's why. And they're doing this with everything. Everything is ugly. Nothing has a standard. Nobody has to try for anything. No parameter, no baseline belief of what's true and what's false. Everything's subjective. Your truth. No, there's the truth. There's no such thing as your truth. And this is an attack on every single level. They're assaulting us from everywhere. Even the buildings they build are assaulting you. So you can't even just drive through a town and go, wow, look how much energy has been put into this place. I love this place. I will not allow them to do it to this place. Now it's just like, ah, we can move there. Ah, let's move there. It's all the same anyway. It's all Starbucks on the corner and a 7-Eleven. Who cares? It's all the same. Why fight? Why fight for any of it? This is, it's all done purposefully. I'm telling you, there's, call me a conspiracy theorist. Call me crazy. I don't understand why an architect would now decide, who hires an architect? I'm going to build a building. Let me hire an architect to come up with the same sketch of the same bullshit building, which is already existing everywhere. How much did I pay him? Yeah, what we're going to do is we're going to build a skyscraper made of grass that looks like every other one. Is that it? We did all this 600 years ago. We built cathedrals and now we build this crap? Why? Everything is on purpose. It's all a psyop. It's all a psyop. When they put these models on there, the psyop is you don't have to try. You don't have to try at anything. Don't try. It doesn't matter. Just don't try. Wait for the government. We'll give you some food stamps. You'll be okay. It's slavery. It's slavery. It's slavery. When you need to do every single thing they say to eat, that's their end goal. That's what they want. It's slavery. They don't want you trying anything. Even going to the gym today is an act of rebellion. Even being in good physical condition is an act of rebellion. If I put up a photo of me and I'm in good physical shape, there are people who write underneath it, oh, you're dumb, you train so good. They insult you for it. Like, 
It's a, you're a bad person because you have standards for yourself. That's the level of bug man they want to get you to. Of course these people will give up meat and eat the bugs and live in the pod. Of course they will. They have no standards. They have no self-respect, no standards. Of course they can live in an ugly building, a big ugly matrix pod. That's all they want. And, 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 it, and it goes back to my original point about the family. I do believe that the reason we didn't have so many problems before is because I believe the families had standards. And some, some cultures still do. I have friends who are Chinese. My dad, I cannot not get an A. That's just their culture. When my dad was still alive and he was teaching chess, my dad would charge four or $500 an hour for chess lessons. And towards the end of his life, he goes, all of my students are Chinese or Indian. Nobody else wants to spend money, $500 an hour to teach their kids chess. Only the Chinese and Indians will spend that money to make sure their kid is that good. So that, that's it. They're the ones who invest the most in their children. They still care on that level. But most families don't wake up and go, ah, I want my children to act a certain way for the legacy, for the family name as a whole. I'm instilling standards upon them because of the last name. My entire life I've had standards in, instilled upon me. My entire life. Your last name's Tate, you can't do that. Your last name's Tate, you're not allowed to do that. Your last name's Tate, but hit him back. I've been like that my whole life. And now we've removed all standards from everybody. This is why you get school shooters. These school shooters should be too embarrassed to even embarrass their fathers. They should wake up and go, I would never do this to my, to my family. And I'll also, this is definitely gonna get me canceled, but I'm gonna say it because it's true. I'll say it by extension for suicide. I don't care what you do to me. I'm Andrew Tate. I cannot kill myself. I can't. I'm not allowed. It's against, it's against the creed of my last name. I didn't have ancestors who suffered how they suffered, who went through what they went through for me to be born to kill myself. That's not why, that's not the end of my story. I refuse, I absolutely refuse. No matter how bad it gets or what bad situation I'm in, I refuse to do it because I have too much respect for my last name. I won't do it. And I, and I think that a lot of things, a lot of men's mental health, a lot of crises can actually just come back to the old adages of honor. And, and you can fix a lot of it. Your girl left you, you miss her. I get it, we've all been heartbroken, she's with a new guy, you're upset, she doesn't care, you care, I get all of it. But, there has to be a point where you get to a level of pride and you just go, that's not who I am. I lost her, that's life. You just got to get on with it. And the best way is to have, where do you find the strength when you're in these difficult situations? I always find the strength from, from my last name, I'm Andrew Tate. I'm Andrew Tate, so I just have to do it. I'm in a Romanian jail cell, I wake up, there's cockroaches in, in my bed, they're all over my face, what am I gonna do, cry? Well, am I going to out? Am I going to go and sign a piece of paper and say I'm guilty? Am I going to sell my brother out? Is that what I'm going to do? Am I going to go fucking lie and, and, put these, and sell the girls out like they want me to? Am I going to stand up and say I'm sorry for, for saying go to the gym like a pussy? No, I'm going to take the cockroaches off my mouth. I'm going to do some push-ups because I'm Andrew Tate. When shit really gets hard, honor and courage and bravery and your last name is all you've ever had. It's all you're going to have. And it used to be like that in the olden days. That's why no one did this dumb shit. They were just too embarrassed to even do it. And this is why you're saying, how do we fix the country? Absolutely all of it comes down to the fact that, especially with men, none of them are bestowed with the things that the masculine essence needs to be a good man. You need pride, you need honor. You need a healthy level of ego. You need all of these things.